read this song. That'd be great. Will you crucify as well? Sure. Okay, let me go. I'll go get it real quick. Just in and out is all we need to do the gospel. So, cross just up next to the flag. Okay, so, mm -hmm. I'll go get it for you. Mary's going to. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I just got how heavy this is. I invite the children to follow the procession to Children's Chapel as the congregation stands for our opening hymn. Good morning and welcome to Christ Church. Our service of morning prayer this morning begins on page one of your bulletin. Thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. 
and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant a most merciful Father for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. O Lord, open thou our lips. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 1, verses 1 through 6, and we'll read it responsively by the half verse. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on this law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes. Nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. But the way of the wicked is doomed. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. You may be seated for the first lesson.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostle. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, Friends, the scripture I had to be fulfilled with the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in the ministry. So one of the men who have accomplished us during, accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us. One of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed to Joseph called Barsabas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know every heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place, and they cast lots of them. And the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of John. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater, for this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their heart. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Let us now stand for the sequence hymn.
name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In today's gospel, we're still in the upper room at the time of the Last Supper, or perhaps we might say at the time of the First Eucharist. We share an amazing experience. We're allowed to overhear a prayer of Jesus, in which he reveals his firm commitment to complete what would certainly seem an impossible mission. Listen to his words. And for their sake I consecrate myself that they may be consecrated in truth. Think about those words. And for their sake I consecrate myself that they may also, they may be consecrated in truth. Jesus is not speaking in some sort of syrupy, sentimental prayer here. This is a costly prayer. He is praying for us. Why? So that we too may be consecrated and committed. So that we too can experience that transforming power of positive commitment. Jesus prays this prayer, first of all, so that we can avoid the hell of uncommitted living. A lot of people are living under the illusion of uncommitted living, it's really cool. There was a display of new coats in a department store display, in a window there, you walk by. This was a, quote, swagger coat. And beside it was an advertisement which read this, this way. This coat captures beautifully that informal air of complete unconcern. And have you seen the advertisements targeting teens for the popular fad of oversized clothing? What message do these clothes send out? It is a philosophy of unconcern, uncaring, lack of self-image. Did you agree that the advertisement that we just, just described here spells out a widely held philosophy of life in today's world, of uncaring, of unconcern? So many people want to be uncommitted. They want to be spectators in the game of living. They're sideliners letting a life pass them by. All through the New Testament, Jesus is, is teaching us that the uncommitted, the unconsecrated, the undisciplined life is worthless. It is a life of waste and stagnation. But you are a prayed for person. You need not know the hell of uncommitted living. And that's the first point. Jesus prays this prayer so that we can avoid the prison of uncommitted living. And secondly, we're not only freed from the paralysis of, of uncommitted living, we're also empowered to make great commitments in our lives. Back, in the, back to the gospel. For their sake, I consecrate myself that they may be consecrated in truth. Now, the Greek defined consecrate to mean sanctify, to make holy, to purify. It means to set apart for a special task. It means to equip with qualities of heart, mind, and character that are necessary for that task for which we have been set apart. Remember Jesus says, remember Jesus is offering his life. He's going to life for the upper room. He's going to give his life. He's making that commitment for us. He says, for their sake. That includes you and me. Now, why did he say this? What does Jesus hope to accomplish by this commitment? You see, by the power of the consecration of his life, he's going to release the power of consecration in the lives of his disciples. And how does this consecration of Jesus show itself? Now, recall from the Gospels, if you will, these examples of the power of consecration in his life, in Jesus' life. It was a Jewish law that anyone who touched a woman who had a flow of blood was rendered ceremonially unclean. 
a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years reaches her hand through a crowd touching the hem, the, the, the hem of Jesus' garment, and she's healed. Anyone who ate with sinners was unclean. Jesus ate with sinners, and the tax collectors and the harlots were transformed. Their lives were changed. Anyone who forgave sins was immediately known as a blasphemer and a madman. Jesus forgave sins, and, uh, and a paralyzed man took up his bed and, and walked. And anyone who, who touched a dead man was unclean. Jesus touched a little girl who had just died. She blinked, sat up, and asked for something to drink. So did you get, are you beginning to get a sense of the power of this prayer? Not just on the surface, but at a depth dimension. I mean, Jesus' face is lifted up to the heavens and he prays with confidence because he is already certain of victory. Look what he's done already. The terrible killing plague of sin and greed and aimlessness, it's, the power has been broken. He said, for their sake I consecrate myself, that they also, and that's the key, you see, that's the message that we over here in this prayer. They also, we, you and I, are included. We're embraced, we received, and we're embraced in the power and effect of Jesus' words in his prayer. And they also make, that they also may be consecrated in truth. The consecration of Jesus enables us to make effective commitment and consecration of our lives. And the third point is because of this prayer of Jesus, which we have uh, we've been overhearing, we possess unbelievable, powerful consecration potential. Think about what that means. It means that you have the capacity for choices and decisions that can affect for good far more than you dream or imagine. It means that when you make a great commitment of yourself to Jesus Christ, when you consecrate your time or your resources or spiritual gifts, your commitment, you realize a positive chain reaction of inspiration and blessing. There was an army base called the Presidio in a large tract of land overlooking the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. It's, it's closed now, and the property belongs to the state. Bev, my wife sitting back there, knows the Presidio very well, for two of our daughters were born in the Army Hospital in, that, in the Presidio. And it overlooks the Golden Gate, the Golden Gate being the harbor from the Pacific, the Pacific, you may know, is not very peaceful. It's a very rough ocean. And coming in there is even rougher than most. But anyway, they, uh, it's an impressive structure. It's not gold, as it says, Golden Gate. It's not gold at all. But there's, but there's a wonderful story about being, about being committed that goes along with this. Back in 1918, there was an engineer by the name of Joseph Strauss and he stood on a windy cliff of the Presidio, looking at the Golden Gate, the harbor entrance in the city of San Francisco. Joseph Strauss pictured in his imagination a bridge spanning that wide and often stormy inlet. Most people, of course, said it couldn't be done. The winds were too strong. The tide was too powerful. The waves were too devastating. The distance was too great. No major harbor entrance had ever been bridged. And the vertical clearance would have to be greater than any other bridge over navigable waters in the world. However, Strauss believed it was possible. And he made a great commitment to his dream. He sketched out a daring and a unique plan with a suspension span of more than 4,000 feet. That's almost a mile further than any ever, any yet attempted. 
And people laughed at his plan. He said, impossible. He refused to give up. And finally, 15 years later, in 1933, work began. The pier on the Marin side, that's the north side of the, of the harbor, of the inlet, uh, they, they created a few problems. But the San Francisco's pier was 1,125 11, feet from shore, offshore. It was totally unprotected for the open ocean. One time, it was ran by a ship. Another time, it was partially carried away by a storm. But finally, the piers were completed, and the great towers arose and the cables were suspended between them. And four years later, in 37, 1937, the Golden Gate Bridge was completed and ready for traffic. And on the day before, it was open for pedestrians only. 200,000 walked across that new bridge. And behind that bridge, an engineer named Joseph Strauss, who believed it could be done, and made that bridge a great commitment of his life. Well, you and I may not be able to commit ourselves to building a great bridge of steel and concrete to serve people, but you do possess a wonderful commitment potentiality. Recall with me the ending of Jesus' talk with God. He says, he prays, I made known to them by thy name and I will make it known that the love with which thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. That's really his prayer for you and me, isn't it? That is what he wants us to know, the reality and wonder of the love of God. That is the depth of the love with which the Father has loved the Son, that it may be in you and me. And Jesus Christ, may live within each of us. Of course, we, such a miracle seems impossible when you think about it. After all, the distance is, is too great between a holy God on the one hand, an omnipotent God, the creator of the universe, all powerful, and way down here is a sinful man. And look at the gap between the two. There's no way across such a gap. But there's one who stands on a hill and he sees the human condition and he believes that it can be spanned. He himself will be the bridge. Jesus will stretch himself across the width above the storms, the tides, the waves. Jesus will be the bridge for us to cross on. And so he prays, for their sake, I consecrate myself. And he throws himself across that gap and he inspires and encourages us, each one of us, not only to use that bridge, but to be bridge builders too. Thanks be to God and amen. Let us now stand and profess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 6. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine heritage. Govern them, and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee. And we worship thy name ever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us. That our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. That we never be confounded. O God, the King of glory, who hast exalted thine only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph unto thy kingdom in heaven, we beseech thee, leave us not comfortless, but send to us thine Holy Ghost to comfort us and exalt us unto the same place whither our Savior Christ is gone before, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the same Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that we, being ordered by thy governance, may do always what is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, and knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray for those who are sick and in need especially Zach, Albert, Evelyn, Ray, Kathy, Thomas, Sharon, Glenn, Steve, Betty, Beverly, Jenny, Mary, Haywood, Bill, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Amen. Almighty God, we entrust all who are dear to us to thy never-failing care and love for this life and the life to come knowing that thou art doing for them better things than we can desire or pray for, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and grant us grace to follow the good examples of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. At this time you may offer your own prayers, either silently or aloud. Lord, hear the prayers of thy people, and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually, to the glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Well, again, good morning and welcome to Christ Church. It's great to have you all worshiping with us this morning. Um, I do have a few announcements to bring your attention to. The first is that next Sunday will be Youth Sunday. Um, Our younger children are going to be singing in church, and the older children are going to have a a skit performance for us to enjoy. Uh, That'll be during the 10.30 a.m. service next Sunday. Next Sunday afternoon will be our parish picnic. That's going to be held at Phil and Christy Hornthal's home out on the river. Uh, There is a sign-up sheet. One has been sent out through email, but there's also, I think, two sign-up sheets actually on the table in the narthex. So if you have not signed up to... Uh, come to the parish picnic, please do so on your way out of church. And for those of you who are watching uh, on our online uh, live stream, if you can sign up through the parish website or call the church office by tomorrow and let them know that you're planning to come, that way we'll make sure we have enough food for everybody. June 21st through 25th is going to be our vacation Bible school Uh, That is open to children from all over the community. Uh, We do have some slots still available, so if you know of some kids, whether they be grandkids or children or uh, neighbors, please let them know. There is a flyer in the back of your bulletin. You can pull it out and you can give it to folks. If you know there's some kids that are playing down the street from you, go and give it to their parents and let them know they can sign up to come for Vacation Bible School. If you're interested in volunteering, we also need volunteers. We still need several volunteers, so please prayerfully consider uh, being the light of Christ in the lives of our children 
um, and sign up to, to volunteer at VBS during that week. The choir, this is their last Sunday with us, uh, our, our vocalists, and I believe that Douglas would like to make a few comments and recognitions of our choir members, our choristers. And he's in the back. That's right. Thank you. We have truly been blessed by um, not just our choir, but by our music director as well. Um, and is there another announcement back there? All right. I wanted to say, um, we are going to have summer choir this summer. So if anyone is interested in singing with the choir, we're going to meet um, at 945 on Sunday mornings here in the chancel. So if you're interested, um, please come and join us. We'd love to have you come and sing and lead worship. Well, we hope y'all will prayerfully consider leading us in music. Yes. But no, thank you, Douglas, and thank you to our choir. Y'all have been a wonderful blessing. Uh, I, as the rector of, I guess I still consider myself the new rector of the church because everything is still new, uh, but they have been so flexible. Um, and during COVID, we've had to change from weekly Eucharist to morning prayer and then back to Eucharist and back and forth between morning prayer and all that kind of stuff. And they have just gone right along and they've done such a beautiful job at, uh, you know, bringing us all the service music and the special pieces and the hymnody uh, that has come along during these, these very different times for the church. And so thank y'all so much for what you've done. Uh, the last announcement I have is I wanted to bring you greetings from our missionaries in Ecuador, from Cameron and Roberto Vivanco. Uh, this past week I went down to Ecuador and spent the week with them uh, and was able to tour the different ministries that they're involved in. Uh, you may or may not know this, but we have been sponsoring the Vivancos for over 20 years. Uh, we have a long relationship with them. We've sent teams down to Ecuador numerous times. Um, and our, our relationship with them and our blessings to their ministry uh, have been very impactful. Um, I can tell you that the ministry in Ecuador is alive and well despite the pandemic, despite the restrictions, which if we think we have tough restrictions here, they are way tougher in Ecuador. Um, they are still not able to have in-person worship services down there, but they are broadcasting. They are going door to door. They're feeding people in their homes. Uh, a lot of people have been out of work. Over 60% of the population actually was without work during the pandemic. Um, so they've been bringing much needed food to them. The schools are still closed in Ecuador, so they are offering tutoring at the churches where children can come and receive tutoring because a lot of their parents um, did not go to school themselves or uh, don't have the ability to pay for online classes or anything like that. The schools are, or the churches are providing computer labs where kids can do online learning. It really is a lot going on, a lot of blessings to a very, um, a, a group of people who are in real desperation. So please continue to keep them in your prayers, keep the ministry in Ecuador in your prayers. Uh, and we are hoping to send a team down next summer, summer of 22, so start praying about whether God is calling you to be a part of that mission team. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts.
continue with the general thanksgiving, let us pray. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, to give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and has promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> 